Let's study about a new chapter called Physical Features of India. Let's first understand about the physical features. Our country has practically all the major physical features of the earth that is mountains, plains, desert, plateaus and islands. The rough terrain with mountains and valleys are common features in the hilly areas. We find different types of rocks. Some are very hard, some are very soft. The color of the soil also varies from place to place because soil is formed of different types of rocks. India is a large landmass formed during different geological periods which has influenced her relief. Besides the geological formations, a number of processes such as weathering, erosion, deposition, these have created and modified the relief to its present form. Plate tectonics According to this theory, the crust of the earth has been formed out of seven major and some minor plates. The movement of these plates results in building up of stresses within the plates and continental rocks above them, the leading to folding, faulting and volcanic activity. Some of these plates, they come towards each other and they form convergent boundary. Some plates move away from each other and they form divergent boundary. When two plates are coming together, they may collide and crumble or one may slide under the other. And at times, they may also move horizontally past each other and form a transform boundary. Most of the volcanoes and earthquakes in the world, they are located at plate margins but some also occur within the plates. In this image, we see the divergent, convergent and transformed plates. Gondwana land, the oldest landmass, was a part of the Gondwana land. The Gondwana land includes India, Australia, South Africa, South America and Antarctica as a single landmass. The convectional currents, it splits the crust into a number of pieces thus leading to the drifting of Indo-Australian plate after being separated from the Gondwana land towards the north side. Northward drift resulted in the collision of the plate with the much larger Eurasian plate. Due to this collision, the sedimentary rocks which were accumulated in, in the geosyncline, the Himalayan uplift of the Tethi Sea and subsidence of the northern flank of the peninsular plateau this resulted in formation of a large basin and in the due course of time, this depression gradually got filled with the deposition of sediments by the rivers flowing from the mountains in the north and the peninsular plateau in the south. A flat land of extensive alluvial deposits, it led to the formation of the northern plains of India. The land of India, it displays a great physical variation. The peninsular plateau, it constitutes one of the ancient land masses of the earth's surface. Himalayas and the northern plains, they are the most recent landforms. From the viewpoint of geology, Himalayan mountains, they form an unstable zone. The whole mountain system of Himalayas, it represents a very youthful topography with high peaks, deep valleys and fast flowing rivers. The northern plains are formed because of alluvial deposits. Major physiographic divisions The physical features of India, it can be grouped under the following physiographic divisions and they are the Himalayan mountains, the northern plains, the peninsular plateau, the Indian desert, the coastal plains and the islands. Let's study in detail about this physiographic divisions. The Himalayan mountains the Himalayan mountains stretch over the northern borders of India. These mountain ranges, they run in a west to east direction from the Indus to the Brahmaputra region. The Himalayas is one of the most rugged mountain barriers of the world. Himalayas cover a outermost range of Himalayas is known as Shivaliks. These ranges are composed of unconsolidated sediments 
brought down by the rivers from the main Himalayan ranges. These valleys are covered with thick gravel and alluvium. The part of the Himalayas lying between the Indus and the Satlaj are known as Punjab Himalaya or Kashmir and Himachal Himalaya. The part of Himalayas lying between the Satlaj and Kali rivers is known as Kumaon. The Kali and the Tista river they demarcate the Nepal Himalayas and also the part lying between Tista and Dihang rivers is known as Assam Himalayas. Brahmaputra marks the easternmost boundaries of the Himalayas. Himalayas bend sharply to the south and spread along the eastern boundary of India. They are known as Purvachal. These Purvachal comprises the Patka Hills, Naga Hills, Manipur Hills and the Mizo Hills. So in this image we see the Himalayan mountains. The Northern Plains Northern Plains has been formed by three major river systems. Those are Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra along with their tributaries. This plain is formed of alluvial soil. The deposition of alluvium in a vast basin lying at the foothills of Himalayas over millions of years formed this fertile plain. It spreads over an area of 7 lakh square kilometers. The rivers coming from the northern mountains are involved in a depositional work. Rivers in their lower course. Rivers in their lower course they split into numerous channels due to the deposition of silt, and these channels are known as distributaries. The northern plains are divided into three sections. The western part of northern plain is known as Punjab plains. The largest part of this plain lies in Pakistan. The Ganga plain extends between Ghagar and Tista rivers. It is spread over the states of northern India that is Haryana, Delhi, UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal to its east. Particularly in the Assam lies the Brahmaputra plain. Northern plains can be split into four regions and they are known as Bhabar, Bhangar, Kankar and Khadar. All the streams are disappeared in the Bhabar belt. South of this belt, the streams and rivers re-emerge and they create a wet, swampy and a marshy region known as Terai. It was a thickly forested region full of wildlife. Bhangar, this part lies above the flood plains of the rivers and terrace-like features. The Peninsular Plateau, this was formed due to the breaking and drifting of the Gondwana land. The plateau has broad and shallow valleys and rounded hills. The plateau consists of two broad divisions, namely the Central Highland and the Deccan Highland. Malabar Plateau is known as the Central Highland. The Vindhya range is bounded by Central Highland on the south and Aravalli in the northwest. The Central Highlands are wider in the west but narrower in the east. The eastward extensions of this plateau are locally known as Bundhelkhand and Bagelkhand. The Chota Nagpur Plateau marks the further eastward extension drained by the Damodar River. The Deccan Plateau is a triangular landmass which lies to the south of River Narmada. Deccan Plateau is higher in the west and slopes gently towards east. Extension of the plateau is also visible in the northeast, locally known as Meghalaya. The Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. These both mark the western and eastern edges of the Deccan Plateau. Western Ghats lie parallel to the western coast, and Eastern Ghats lie parallel to the eastern coast. Western Ghats are higher than the Eastern Ghats. The Eastern Ghats are stretched from the Mahanadi Valley to the Nilgiris in the south. The eastern ghats are discontinuous and irregularly dissected by rivers draining into the Bay of Bengal. The western ghats are differently known by local names. The heights of the western ghats, it progressively increases from the north to the south. The highest peaks include the Anamudi and the Doda Beta. Mahendragiri is the highest peak in the Eastern Ghats. Chevroy Hills and Javadi Hills 
are located to the southeast of eastern ghats one of the distinctive features of the peninsular plateau is the black soil area known as the deccan the indian desert is lies towards the western margins of aravalli hills it is an undulating sandy plains covered with sand dunes this region receives very little rainfall below 150 mm per year it has arid climate with low vegetation cover and luni is the only river in this region in this image we see the indian desert the coastal plains the peninsular plateau is flanked by a stretch of narrow coastal strip running along the arabian sea on the west and bay of bengal on the east the western coast is sandwiched between the western ghats and the arabian sea and it is a very narrow plain it consists of three sections the northern part of the coast is known as konkan that is mumbai goa region the central stretch is known as kannad plain why the southern stretch is referred as malabar coast the plains along the bay of bengal they are very wide and leveled in the northern part they are referred as northern sirkar and the southern part is known as koromandal coast large rivers such as mahanadi godavari krishna and kaveri they have formed extensive delta on this coast lake chilika this is an important feature along the island india has two groups of islands the lakshadweep island group it lies closely to the malabar coast of kerala this group of islands they are composed of small coral islands in 1973 they were named as lakshadweep they cover about a small area of 32 square kilometers kavarathi island is a headquarters of lakshadweep the elongated chain of islands located in the bay of bengal extending from the north to the south they are known as andaman and nicobar islands they are bigger in size and more scattered the entire group of islands is divided into two categories andaman in the north and nicobar in the south these island groups are of great strategic importance for the country